is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doll. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number, oh my goodness, 197, would you believe? So I know I say this every week, but honestly, I cannot actually quite believe we've done nearly 200 weeks of these um, mass making sessions because I started them as a sort of, oh, I'm not even sure that, you know, we'll kind of do a second week. Um, but yes, so we are doing reruns for those people who don't watch my channel. So we are rerunning week number 97, so week number 197. Um, and what are we making this week? So we are making window envelope books. Now these were inspired by Natasha from Treasure Books. So they are not my idea. They were inspired, you know, by Natasha. Totally, yeah, not my, my idea. But obviously we did do them at week number 97 as well. So if you are wanting to mass make along, what you are going to need for this mass making session is you are going to need a bunch of junk mail envelopes. Now, when I say this, I'm, I'm meaning just used envelopes, basically, that you've had through the post. Preferably window envelopes. You could do these without the window. However, you're not going to then get quite the same effect because the window is going to be kind of like part of the finished, um, not product, but you know, the finished article. Um, so yeah, preferably window envelopes, but if you haven't got window envelopes, don't worry too, too much. Um, so a bunch of envelopes. Now, again, if you haven't got used envelopes, again, you could use new ones. Um, I'm just using these because of course, you know, it's a way of actually using up some of our junk that we have laying around. So a bunch of envelopes. You are then going to need some papers which are, um, you know, flexible. And by that I'm talking, um, you know, book pages or, you know, printables. I've got here a variety. So I've got a bunch of printables on, you know, um, well, it's just slightly thicker than copy paper, but flexible papers. So I think mine's 110 GSM. I've got tons and tons here. I mean, just how many I think I'm going to be making, I have no idea, but clearly overestimated how many papers I need. So I've got a whole selection of papers there. Then I've got some book pages for just in case I don't want to use the printables. I've also got some vintage documents, which these are kind of reasonably thick, so they would glue down quite well onto the page without kind of glue showing through. Because sometimes, you know, proper vintage stuff can look very thin and flimsy and then your glue's not, you know, not going to kind of react brilliantly with it. It's all going to show you through. But I've tried to select some thicker ones. May use those, might even just get buried somewhere and forget I've even got those. Um, and then what you're also going to need is some thicker paper. Now, the thicker paper is to form a pocket behind your window section of the envelope. So again, when I say thicker paper, this is printed on actually 230 GSM. So it's considerably thicker than, um, you know, photocopy paper, which is generally around 70 to 80. Um, however, I am a very clumsy person. So I require quite thick, rigid papers for making things like pockets. If you are much more confident with your abilities to not tear your papers, you could get away with something thinner. Now, I'm not necessarily saying as thin as this, which is, you know, the paper that I've printed the flimsier parts on, which is 130 GSM, um, but anywhere in between that. So you could use scrapbook paper, you could use book pages, you could use, you know, anything that you've got. I personally would not use anything less than this. So this is 110 GSM. I would not use anything less than that, only because I would be likely to tear it. Um, so aside from that, what else are you going to need? I'm going to be coffee dyeing some of my papers and you'll see why in a minute, because we want to have the backs preferably kind of coffee dyed. I might also coffee dye the fronts of my envelopes. We'll kind of see. Maybe you might like to have some stamps or something like that, again, to decorate your envelopes if you are not covering the fronts with paper. So again, you know, completely different styles and different takes on these. So depending on how you're going to be using them. And you'll see, obviously, once we get making some. You're then going to need some scissors. If you like to use a paper trimmer, obviously, you know, chop your scissors out for a paper trimmer. Um, but you may need scissors as well. And then you're going to need maybe a bone folder, um, you know, 
or your scissor handles if you like to use that kind of thing. Um, and then you're going to need some glue. Now I've got both of my glues here that I like to use. So I've got my Anita's Tacky Glue, that's a PVA based glue. And I've also got my Fabri-Tac. So I kind of interchange these, um, you know, depending on what it is I'm gluing. Generally, if I'm gluing paper, I tend to stick with my Anita's Tacky Glue. But that being said, you know, often it's just whichever glue I happen to pull in first. So, you know, either are absolutely fine. Um, and then you're going to probably need something like a glue spreader just to spread your glue. Whenever I'm spreading glue, I like to use a dried out baby wipe to just mop out any kind of overage of glues. Um, I think that's probably pretty much all you're going to be needing. So I'm going to move those to one side and let's just then have a look at what we're going to be making. So these are little fold out kind of um, envelope books. So what you're going to start by doing, as you can see, my, you know, my envelope is pretty tatty because obviously it's a used one that, you know, has been all opened. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by chopping it down across here. So I'm just going to chop it down about there. Now, again, I don't measure. I'm just judging by eye, kind of thinking, you know, I wonder how big do I want to have my pieces? So I'm just going to chop it down like that. Now, I also need to separate the top part where it's obviously still, you know, still folded and glued down. So... And just cutting that top part off like that okay now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be forming a pocket here on the window side and then we're going to be forming a wrap around here with this side so what I need to do is make this considerably smaller so as I've got enough room to wrap this section around okay so I'm going to just take this and I'm just going to cut it down Again, judging by eye, like that. Okay, and that's got rid of a lot of that tatty kind of envelope portion as well. Now, this is going to be my fold over piece, but I'm not going to fold that over just yet. So what we've got now is our foundation for our booklet. So I'm just going to pull in some paper. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to form a little pocket here behind our window okay so I'm just going to have a look through my papers that I've bought along now these are from my um, new papers these are my large bird cage papers my large sorry bird house papers um, and I thought these would be quite nice for this so I'm going to cut down I think this side just to try and make it a bit straighter to work from okay and then I just want to fold it in to sort of gauge how big I need that pocket to be so you know I don't like measuring things this is my you know my method of measuring is place it next to the piece it's going to go on and then I just fold my paper according to you know roughly where I think that needs to be so again squish that down nicely with my scissor handles and then what I will do is just cut along here like that, okay? Like that. So this is going to be my portion that's my pocket. So that's why we want to coffee dye this back part because this is going to go in here so as we've got pretty, you know, pretty paper kind of showing through the pocket. And then on the back, we will obviously use this for journaling space. So, you know, you could, of course, leave it white. But, you know, I prefer to have things probably copy dyed because I just think it looks a bit prettier, really. So that's going to be that. Now, I just want to choose from the papers that are bought along. Find a paper that I think is going to look pretty with this. Obviously, it's not going to be kind of smack bang next to it or anything like that. But, you know, it is going to be near it. So, of course, I do want it, you know, semi-matching. Semi 
Oh, these French papers. So these are from my collections papers as well. And these are my French collection. But they just go with everything. Because to be honest, they even go with that, don't they? Um, this is my new collection with my pale lace. Which actually, they look quite pretty. Or I've got that from the French collection. Which looks um, quite nice, isn't it? Uh, oh, I don't know now. I have got lots more here beside me. So let me just see whether I've got any others that might be more suitable, so. Oops, don't know what that one's doing in there. Okay. So, oh. Shout if you spot one that you think is going to look good. No, I'm just kidding, obviously I won't be able to hear you, but I mean, that's quite nice with that. Uh, that's quite nice. So these are from my London collection, Victorian London type collection. So they're also quite nice with it, aren't they? Yeah, perhaps we'll do something like that. Okay, right. Do I want that? Just going to check just before I actually, you know, finally decide on that. I actually was thinking it would look better with the like, butterfly pages. Oh, maybe that. Oh, I don't know now. They all look quite pretty, to be honest. Um, maybe even the shabby chic. I don't know. Oh, I'm nearly nearly gone through all the papers that I've bought along now. Oh, Ooh. oh I've got my... Oh, maybe that. So this is from my Pink Paris paper. Yeah, I think that one actually. So complete U-turn there. But yeah, I think that's going to look nice. So I'm going to cut this down actually and just use this in sort of half. So I'll just cut it down and then I'll trim it once I've glued it onto the piece. Okay, so yeah. So what I'm going to start by doing is covering this portion first. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want it to go around the corner where the fold is if that makes sense so that when I put my pocket on it's going over that paper now the reason I'm doing that is because we're firming up that paper there where it's folded so I'm going to cut this back section down okay like that okie dokie and then we're just going to glue this down onto here. So I'm just taking my glue and we're just going to run some glue. Oh, come on now. Oh, I don't like this. Not used my glue yet today, but I mean, it's had the lid on, so I don't know why it's, oh no, why it's playing up now. Oh, this is because we're suddenly having lovely weather after having had really rubbish weather for ages. So my glue's obviously gone, you know, well, it's just protesting, protesting. Right, so going all around here like this. And I know I've talked about this before, but honestly, these reruns, they're pretty useful because you do develop different methods because I had to watch, obviously, this morning, you know, the previous one so, so I could remember what we were making and how I made them. And... I did notice that I glued the pockets down first and I thought, oh, why did I do that? Because, you know, I think this is better to be able to actually then sturdy the fold up. So, you know, I think they're definitely good for not perfecting your methods, but definitely improving your, you know, your methods of making. And, you know, sometimes it might be that what suits you you know for a period of time then sort of later on you think oh actually i i prefer doing it this way now um you know so there's no hard and fast rules of which way round you must do it so we've got that down like that okay now i'm going to just fold this over here just so we don't lose where our fold is okay like that Dokey, mop that glue out but it's just seeping out there so then what I want to do is obviously have this as my pocket on the front okay 
So I'm just going to take this down roughly more to the size. Doesn't have to be exactly to the size because I will trim this whole thing up in a moment, but just so it's a bit smaller, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to coffee dye the back of this so it's not glaring white. And again, that's just personal preference. You know, it's not an essential step. So I like to coffee dye at the moment, my favorite way to coffee dye. When I'm just doing one or two odd sheets, I mean, obviously different if I'm doing a whole big batch of coffee dyeing, but if I'm just doing one or two odd sheets, I like to just get a wet baby wipe. And the reason why it helps if it's wet is you're not getting the paper too, too dark. So just a wet baby wipe, dip it into my cup of black coffee there and just, you know, paint it over. So like that, okay? And then I'm going to glue my pocket down. Now, because I'm obviously doing a video, I'm not going to bother waiting for that to dry. So obviously in the real world, you would wait for that to dry, <laughs> but I'm just trying to obviously speed up the process so you're not just watching and feeling really bored. So. I'm just going to apply my glue here down the side and along the bottom. Now, just because I can't really see quite where my fold line is, the other side I'm going to glue here, direct to my pocket piece. Okay, like that. And that then just going to go into here so what I'll do I just fold this up so as I can get it pretty close then into the fold line take my dry wipe again and then just squish that down like that getting all the glue you know smooshed out around the edges like that okay so wipe that up and again, just press that down like that. Okay, so then what you can do is obviously tidy your whole piece up. Now at this point, again, I'm going to fold this over so that my folding flap is going to look a bit more attractive, okay? So this is another thing that I did not do in the first round of making these. And I might not do this with all of them, but as you can see, I've got this kind of nasty, you know, where it was in the original envelope business going on. So either way, I would probably want to cover that up because otherwise I'm going to have this unsightly bits, you know, sticking over. So by just popping that down there, covered that up, Okie dokie, take all of that away, like that. So then what you can do is trim up your entire piece, like that, okay. all down there and then here I've just got a bit of overhang here on this edge so just trim that up there like that obviously if you've got any um you know hanging over the top you can trim that out as well just got a very small bit there okay right okay so that's my piece and then just going to that smooshed down and then what you're going to do is this is going to become your little fold over so like that okay so just squish that down with your bone folder or your scissor handles again I've just got a bit of glue seeping out like that like that Now, what I have not done so far is I have not coffee dyed my envelope. But at this point, I can just go over my envelope that's obviously glaring white 
and just coffee dye that. So just exactly the same method using that wet wipe all around there. Okay. Now obviously at the moment I've got some of the, you know, the underneath of the envelope showing through, but hopefully that's going to disappear as it dries. So what you've got is you've got your top loading pocket here. Oops, it's a bit soggy now. You've got a top loading pocket here. I don't want to pull that because it's now wet from coffee dime, but you've got a top loading pocket there and then you've got this booklet. So you've got journaling space in here and of course you could put some more journaling space down on here or you could put, you know, a little pad or anything. You could put an eyelet in here and wrap it round or, you know, however you like to finish that off. So they're really, really nice, aren't they? So let's make a second one and hopefully I'll kind of be a bit quicker. So this one is a much smaller envelope and actually I'm going to really struggle to make it with this because as you can see, my back is completely cut down. So we're going to have to do a bit of tweaking with this one. So what I'm going to do is cut this down here. So we're starting out exactly the same as we did with the first one. Okay. Oops. And then we're going to take this side down Again, you know, just as we did with the first one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut this side down to make this, you know, again, much smaller. Like that. And you may have some envelopes like this that you've, you know, you've opened and now they're, um, you know, they're quite significantly torn and so your back section is too small really to do anything much with with regards to you know making a fold over sort of closure so what we need to do is actually sort of put like what I would call a sleeve over this to extend it okay so let's bring in some paper here that we're going to use as our pocket so these are using remember the much thicker papers now, these are my new steam, steampunk papers. Um, so, yeah, I've just put a few days ago um, a bunch of different steampunk papers. Now, you have to excuse my printing. This is very thick paper. Like I say, it's 230 GSM and my printer does not like sucking it through. So it always kind of pulls it through and goes wonky and, you know, end up with this big edge on there. Um, that's not the printables, that's my printer. So yeah, I must kind of just point that out. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, for instance, this one here. So, and I've got three different um, steampunks, that's what I was saying, three different steampunk papers. So I've got um, a brown and green, a pale pink and sort of pastel-y one, and a sort of rich coloured one as well. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and have, I think, this section in, or actually, maybe that section. This section might be easier to get in. So, let's take this here, and we're just going to cut this down like this. Okay, so this is what we're using as our window section here okay so what we need to do is obviously trim that down but we can trim that down afterwards I might just trim it down slightly just along this white edge but it's you know it's not a big deal we can trim that down afterwards so that's that what I might do is actually paint this so is the coffee dye is drying like that okay Just because hopefully then that's not going to be soggy when we actually glue it on. So I can rest that on my hot glue gun. And I might also go over the front of the envelope. And again, that hopefully will be drying as well. Okay, so that's that piece. Now, what we want to do is, like I say, make a sort of what I would call a sleeve for the back section. So as to extend the back. So... If I pull my papers back in, put them to one side, but if I pull them back in, now I'm sure 
I printed. Now, of course, I'm going to find I hadn't. Ah, right, okay. So I printed the pale lace, which I thought this would look gorgeous with that steampunk. Although, to be honest, I'm now thinking maybe this is a bit on the thick side. Right, let me see whether I had some of that on the thinner paper. I feel like I did, but I might be wrong. Oh no, what is going on here? Perhaps I didn't. I felt sure that I did. Ah, here we go. Right, okay. No, that's thick paper as well, but it's not as thick as this. So yeah, I'm going to use this. So it's not, you know, it's not quite the paper that I would have liked to be using, but it will do. So this one, I mean, it's pretty nice against here, isn't it? This is from the pale lace in the pinks, and um, uh, the greens and the blues. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to still go around that crease like that. But this is where I'm saying, you know, it's a shame that this paper is quite thick, to be honest, because in an ideal world, I would now be using thinner paper, okay? I'm just, you know, kind of making the best of a bad situation. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to glue this down onto here. So going over that crease, just like we did on the last one, so that we can go, oops, go around the crease. And then here, like that. So all over here, like that, okie dokie. And then we're going to take our paper and we're just going to pop it down like that. Okay. So then we need to obviously, you know, mop this out with the glue spreader. So like this. Oops. Oh dear. Right. Now what we need to now do is we need to gauge where we want this to be. So I'm going to go back to the front. Now this is not brilliant because my piece is not dry. Oh, I've not really gone around the crease. Oh, I didn't go around the crease on this one. Right, my mistake, I did not go around the crease. So this is totally, oh, maybe I did. I might have gone around the crease, but where it's wet I obviously couldn't quite see oh right this is why you should leave your pieces to dry right okay so not great but obviously this is because I'm rushing to do the video so what we need to now do is gauge how big we need this to be in order to have this Oops. Oh my goodness, I'm going to end up tearing this. You can see it's tearing already. Oh dear. Right, do not do this when it's wet. Because I'm not making a good job at all. Right, we're going to now go in here, cut this down. And then, and cut it about here. Okay. You want to gauge how big you need your piece to be to meet that fold. So like that. Now I'm hoping that I'm going to manage to disguise this when I come to actually finish this off. But at the moment, this is, you know, not looking good at all, it's got to be said. So here, I'm going to go round to the back, like that, okay. And then I'm going to make my fold out. So I'm going to just go over slightly more. Otherwise, I'm going to have the same situation that I've got on the front where I don't really have enough leverage. Like that. Okay. And then that's going to fold over. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to make the fold now. So like that. 
Right, now I have made a very poor job of doing this because I've obviously tried to do it whilst it's wet to save you guys, you know, having to watch and wait for it to dry. This obviously is, you know, um, how not to, not to do really. Well, it's a how-to, but, you know, I'm saying you would need to, you know, dry it maybe with your heat tool or something like that in between the stages here. Um, but... If you did wait for this to dry, you know, the actual technique would work fine. Because what we've done here is we have extended the paper. Okay. So if I just now fold that back over, squish that down like that. Okie dokie. Like that. Okay, right. So let's just now. Right, this is really bad down here. Got to be said. Just, yeah, just terrible job there. But I might be able to kind of like trim this down a little bit, which will, you know, also further disguise the mess I've made of this. So just going to trim it down here like that. Now you can see I've properly torn that paper which is oh really annoying but that's just because it's been so you know was so soggy when I was trying to glue that other paper onto it so yeah it's a how not to how to but how not to um type of video so <laughs> the method is okay but do not or you know the idea the concept's okay but don't follow my method i.e wait for your pieces to dry right so there we go. Now I can, yeah, probably go in and trim this a little bit more. Okay, right. So then what you've got is you've got your flap here, which folds over. I mean, to be honest, it's a shame I tore that because the actual piece itself, I really do love. Um, you know, I just have not made a very good job of it because it was very soggy so then what you can do is obviously glue your pocket in like that now here what you can do is you could either then just glue something over where you've done this or you could maybe reinforce it on the inside now the problem with that is we've got the plastic there so personally I'm not going to do that I'm going to try and you know disguise it from the outside so first of all, I'm just going to glue my my pocket down. Oh no, come on. Don't start muck, mucking about again. So, um, I don't believe this. This is a brand new glue, honestly, and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. It's just messing about for me for some reason. Right, let's just take that down there. Okay, right. And we come down this edge here and across the bottom. Okay, like that. Now, I'm just looking at the time. Oh my goodness me! It's 33 minutes. I mean, so much for mass making. I mean, you know, I was hoping to make quite a few of these. Made two. So, yeah, I need to get a bit of a, bit of a move on in a minute. Um, so I do apologise that this video is a little bit, you know, a little bit protracted. But I wanted to demonstrate how you would extend an envelope that was then too small. And that's obviously, you know, held us up. So, right, there we go. Now, obviously, my pocket needs trimming down and things and tidying up. I will do that in a minute. I'm not going to waste more time on this pocket for the moment. But, we'll, yeah, we'll tidy that up in a minute. And then I think you'll, you know, I think that will still look fine. So we'll come back to that one. So let's quickly mass make a couple because otherwise we've not mass made really any. So I've kind of failed, failed completely. So, yeah, let's just pull in a couple of, a couple of envelopes. So, okie dokie, right. So I'm going to try and mass make these now. So probably only going to get to do two. So let's just have a bit of a mass making session. And yeah, we're going to do these assembly line style. So by that, I mean doing all of the stages in the, you know, the same order. So all of the parts. So for instance, here, I've just put these envelopes together and I'm cutting them down 
and then I will cut the pockets and then I will, you know, cut the back pieces and so on. So it's like an assembly line and we will just, you know, relax and have a nice time for the last kind of half an hour. So yeah, I do apologise for the protracted kind of nature of the first half of this video. So there we go. So yeah, let's, let's just have a relax now and... Um, yeah, I hope everybody's week has started out well. Now for this one, I just want to quickly point out what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold this over so that my fold, you know, I've got more to play with. My window was quite far over, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do the same on this one. Just because I would prefer that like that. Okay, now I'm just going to cut this down here near the window okay and then let's pick our papers that we're going to have poking through the window so I hope everybody's week has started out well so if you watch my mass making sessions you'll know that I make them on a Monday ready to upload on a Tuesday so first things first is my apologies so I really apologize for um well for a couple of things Firstly, there was a bank holiday, so there was no mass making um, on one of the weeks because there was a bank holiday. And I had not realised that the week before. Otherwise, of course, I would have, you know, forewarned you. These are from my butterfly um, collection. This, I think, is my cabinet, butterfly cabinet um, collection. So, yeah, I've got two butterfly collections. One is the butterfly collection and one is the butterfly cabinet collection. I think this is from that. Um, so that's my first apology is, you know, I do really apologise. I obviously had not realised that it was bank holiday coming up. So, yeah, I'm so sorry that there was no mass making. And then the other apology is for then the following mass making session, which was just ridiculous because I had filmed it and I filmed it in the afternoon and um, you know I don't generally film especially mass making videos in the afternoon I occasionally film you know other videos but not very often in the afternoon but definitely for some reason not mass making ones and obviously the mass making videos tend to be quite long videos like this one um, and what had happened was I filmed it in the afternoon, but, you know, still it wasn't late. There should have been absolutely plenty of time, um, you know, to get it all uploaded. And for some reason, it just would not upload. So it kind of almost like got stuck in the upload. And, you know, it had taken like absolutely ages. And um, oh, I'm just thinking I'm going to use another one of the steampunk. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want me another one. Yeah, should we use this? Another one of these. I might not have enough of these steampunky type items showing actually, so perhaps I won't. Um, yeah, so it had been taking a long time. Well, perhaps I'll just go for the brown butterflies actually. We'll keep this quite a neutral one. So it had been uploading for a long time and um, it was very frustrating. But I went to bed with it still uploading. And of course, you know, thinking, oh, that's going to, you know, carry on uploading overnight and, you know, it will be fine. So I was able to do everything, um, you know, to set it to upload and schedule it and all of that stuff. However, I couldn't believe my eyes because when I woke up the next day, lo and behold, it was still uploading. So I can't apologise enough. I did straight away put a post out on the, um, you know, the community post tab, um, apologising for the late, you know, the late publishing of the mass making video. But honestly, I don't know quite what actually happened with that video because it still, you know, was not uploading. So what happened, I actually had to, you know, upload it a second time. And weirdly, the second one also was taking forever. Now, I don't know whether that was at YouTube's end, there was a problem or something, or, you know, whether it just didn't like that video. I honestly don't know. But I really am so sorry, because obviously at the time when I, you know, posted the video saying, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, it will be up soon. 
you know, it still was then several hours. So I really am so, so sorry. And, um, you know, like I say, I can't really even tell you why that happened. I'm thinking maybe this. So this is my um, invoice headers papers. So just going to cut this down here like that. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to go for those. And then this one, let's see what I've got in terms of my softer papers. So, yeah, I'm so, so sorry because, um, you know, it then still took a long time to actually upload, you know, and I can't even remember now which one won the upload, whether it was the sort of fresh upload or the, the original one that actually made it to be published. But I honestly don't know what that was about, you know, and like I say, I don't know whether that was YouTube's end. Were they just having a sort of, you know, problem that day? I don't honestly know, but I'm so, so sorry. It's so annoying when things like that happen because you know you don't necessarily know what's causing these things so um you know obviously I'm not really a techie you know um my technical knowledge is yeah limited somewhat so I have no idea why that you know why that was the problem it was but yeah very very sorry for that and I do apologize as well for the um you know, the bank holiday weekend, because like I say, I hadn't actually realised it was a bank holiday. So yes, I'm terribly sorry about that as well. So right now we've got our new crease here. So I'm just going to fold this or cut this down because I don't need this obviously as big as that's going at the moment. There we go. So I've just cut that down. So I'm just going to glue my background page on first and then I'll trim that up. So, yeah. So what have I been up to? Well, what have I been up to? It was the first day back at school today for the children. So after the summer break. Um, oh, my goodness. I can't believe it's been that six weeks already. I mean, talk about flyby. The weather has been such a rubbish summer here this year. And, you know, obviously that's probably made the difference. But, you know, because we didn't even have a day out at the beach. Nothing, 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 nothing. And, you know... I mean, I was quite busy because there was obviously quite a lot that I was still doing. Um, you know, I mean, obviously I was working, but I was, you know, busy with my other stuff that I've got going on as well. And, um, yeah, so it just flew by. And last night I said to my daughter, oh, my goodness, can you believe that, you know, the summer holidays are over? They've just, like, whizzed by. And she was like, no, you know, it's, it's been, like, all, you know, six weeks already just shocking absolutely shocking so yeah she's back at school um now you can probably see i've had my nails done so my friend has now you know done nails like learned how to do nails so um yeah did my my nails so i'm still deciding whether you know whether i like them or how i how i'm getting on with them um so i do apologize if they're at all annoying or anything like that um, you know, I mean, obviously the, the hope is they are actually, you know, improving the appearance of my, my hands generally. Um, but yeah, I'm obviously still getting to grips with them. So I do apologize if they are a bit annoying because, you know, sometimes I can't pick things up properly and things like that. So, um, yeah, but anyway, we shall see. So she was obviously like, Oh, have your nails done. I'm not sure how I'll get on with crafting, but she said, oh, don't have them too long. I mean, for me, they still feel quite long. Um, I probably would have them shorter, but anyway, we shall see. I do feel very feminine and, um, you know, really nice and girly. So from that perspective, they are super lovely, um, you know. So, yeah, maybe I will stick with them. You know, and of course, obviously, when your videos are or your your hands are in videos all the time you know you want to try and have sort of reasonable looking hands don't you and I mean unfortunately my hands often just look really old and really awful so yeah maybe this is an improvement I don't know but not obviously if I can't then pick things up so yeah what have I been watching? So I watched a brilliant series last week. I watched the whole thing. Um, I think it was only like four episodes. Um, 
but I binge watched the whole thing over like three nights, I think it was. It was called Trust Me. It was on Netflix. Um, it was a yeah British thing. I don't know whether it's you know new or whether I'd only just come across it. I'm not sure, but I really really enjoyed it. So it was um, basically a lady. She's working as a nurse and. Um, yeah, she decides to become a doctor. That's all I'm going to say on it because I don't want to ruin anybody's viewing if if you decided to watch it. So she decides to become a doctor, not in the conventional way. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but yeah, I would really recommend it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was going to take a sinister turn at one point, um, you know, in which case maybe it wouldn't be, you know, everybody's cup of tea. However, it didn't. It, you know, it stayed, you know, it stayed nice. Well, yeah, stayed good viewing anyway. Um, so, yeah, I would really, really recommend that. I really did enjoy it. So, yeah, that's what I've binge watched. Um, I think that's all I've watched, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's all I've watched. And then I'm now really busy because we are renting our house out again. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that also has come around hideously quickly. So if you watch my channel, you'll know that we rented our house out last year. We have this, um, you know, exciting event here, Goodwood Festival of Speed and Goodwood Revival. I mean, they're kind of, you know, they're internationally recognised events and things at the motor racing circuit here. Um, and our house is very, very close to it. So, you know, we were very lucky because we were able to rent our house out last year for both events and now this year for both events. Um, so although we are very lucky because we have rented our house out for it, you know, and of course it is, you know, it is worth doing sort of, you know, financially it is worth doing. Oh my goodness, it's such a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, oh, last year I was kind of enthusiastic because it was the first time. Oh, this year I was less enthusiastic come June when it was, or July it might have been, when it was the Festival of Speed. And now this year, or this time around, you know, for the revival, I'm like, oh my goodness, again, again, we're doing it again. Um, yeah, so, oh, I can't wait for it to be over. So I have to be out of our house tomorrow. So tomorrow until next week. Um, so yes, we have spent the whole weekend, mainly my my son, my middle son, who luckily for me, he loves cleaning. So yeah, luckily for me, he loves cleaning. So he has done a wonderful job of cleaning um, the whole weekend. So there's only, you know, a little bit of cleaning left to do. Now, <laughs> I mean, my house isn't the cleanest, you know, it's definitely, definitely not the tidiest. But it's not dirty, you know, kind of by any stretch of the imagination. But obviously the problem is because you're renting it out, you know, to people, you really have to kind of go to town and clean it to the standards that, you know, are way above kind of your ordinary living standards, if you see what I mean. So, you know, if you're thinking, oh, goodness, you know, how come it takes her so long to be cleaning her house? Well, that's why. Is because, you know, you've got to kind of like... Yeah, just make sure it's extra, extra, extra clean. You know, like sort of, I don't know, sort of, I don't know, dust in the shelves that, you know, the plates and the tins and all that go on. You know, all those kinds of things that generally, you know, we don't very often do, do we? Or, I don't know, the cobwebs and, you know, sort of all of that stuff, like hoovering kind of like down behind like the table and things. You know, like all of those things that, you know, I mean, personally, I don't really tend to do very often all of those things you kind of have to do because of course you know you're renting your house out to other people and you know you can't afford for it to be dirty in any way shape or form so um yeah it's just a lot of work and of course you've got to move all of your stuff out so yep we've you know put our stuff all in the garage now luckily we didn't really fully get our stuff out from the last time because it was in july so it was only something like eight weeks, I think, between the two events. So we kind of like said, well, let's try and leave our stuff as best we can, you know, in the garage and not really get it out. So we've been kind of like surviving on, you know, the minimal clothes, um, you know, 
I mean, my daughter especially. So the house, you know, the garage is kind of like in the house. So <laughs> her clothes are all like in suitcase. And so a couple of times she's like, oh, where's my, you know, this, that and the other. And I've said to her, oh, it's in the garage in the suitcase, you know, go and have a look. Well, you can imagine, can't you, the mess that she makes when she's been looking for things. So, yeah, she's made a right mess in the garage. So that as well, it will be a relief when it's all done and dusted. And we can move back in properly and, you know, not be renting it out, certainly until next year. Um, so, yeah. But it is one of those catch-22s because, you know, much as it is like, oh atrocious and oh so much work it is um you know obviously you know very worthwhile kind of like financially doing so you know you just got to do what you've got to do haven't you and um yeah so anyway that's what we have been busy doing for the last few days and thank goodness I'm coming to the end of it and yeah I've just got a little bit or yeah just got a little bit more left to do so be out of here by tomorrow so at the moment my son's already gone to stay with his friend um my daughter's going to stay with her dad for the week and then um yeah, I'm going to stay with my son's friend as well. So he has kindly said that uh, Bo, that's my dog, Bo and I can go and stay as well. So, yeah, we're going to stay there. And um, luckily, it's it's quite close to where my daughter will be. So I'll still be able to see her, you know, while we're there. Um, oh, yeah, just a bit of a nightmare. But so at the moment, my son's already gone now after he finished kind of a lot of the cleaning yesterday. He's already gone to his friends now. So it's just my daughter and, and myself now. And, um, oh my goodness, like, <laughs> we're now down to only, like, we can only go in the kitchen and my bedroom um, because everywhere else is clean and tidy. So, you know, she is like, you know, oh, I just need to get such and such. And I'm like, no, you cannot go in that room. You know, no, no, no. So, yeah, she's not even allowed in her own room. I mean, oh, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? But yeah, she's not even allowed to go in her own bedroom. Um, but it's fine, because I mean, obviously I've taken all of her stuff out, so she's got really no reason to go in there. Um, but equally, I mean, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Not even being able to go in your own room. So yeah, she's like, oh, I just need, no, you can't, you're gonna have to do without it. So yeah, she's not going in her own room. And, um, yep, by tonight, so we'll be cleaning the kitchen. I said to her, I'll get you a McDonald's for dinner because I'm hoping, like, after I do this video, I'm going to go and clean the kitchen and get that all spick and span. And then it will be no use in the kitchen either. I mean, obviously, we will be having breakfast in there tomorrow. Um, you know, but no kind of, like, hanging around in there. So, yeah we shall try and do that and I also need to tidy up the garden so the garden's obviously got some you know cleaning up needs doing it's got a lot of leaves and things like that it's not been a very good summer so we haven't really used our garden all summer so it's looking very tatty so I've also got to tidy that up this afternoon so um that's my plan for the rest of the day believe you me I would much rather be here hanging out crafting but yeah unfortunately need to go and do that but yeah I can't wait until after the event and we can just move back in and you know it will be done it will be done and no more so yeah can't wait can't wait till next week so that's the thing that we've been doing um yeah it's all just been hectic really kind of doing things like that and getting ready for that so you know tons of washing I've been doing obviously trying to wash loads of bedding and towels and you know any clothes that are in the wash bin get them washed so that they're packed away but clean I don't want to just have dirty washing packed away you know clothes for next week that we might need uh, not next week now now with this week 
um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's been, it's been kind of like lots of just rubbish really, you know, washing and cleaning. So can't wait, can't wait till it's done. There we go. Okay, right. Okay, well, I have been pretty rubbish today and hardly achieved any, but that was because we were like extending that, you know, that first one. So let's pull in the ones that we have done. So we have done these, these, this one, which of course was the, you know, the big um, mucked up one. And then what did I do with the first one? Oh, do you know, I can't actually even see it now. Disappeared disappeared never to be seen again oh I never did use any of those documents you know that I said oh I bought the original documents oh what have I done with that first one do you know I honestly have no idea can't see it anywhere <laughs> just what on earth I mean how can you actually lose something you're even working on I don't know I'm just having a look because it must be it must be here somewhere no not there. Mm. Honestly, everywhere is so messy. So I, oh, here we go. I'm not taking a bunch of craft into, um, you know, my son's friends because, um, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, it's not great. People don't then want me ever coming again because I make such a lot of mess. So I'm just going to be taking, um, you know, some fussy cutting and my laptop where hopefully I'm going to work on a new kit for Christmas and things like that so yeah I'm going to try and do that over the next few days okay right let's work on this one because this was that one that obviously you know I really did muck up so when I say work on it I just mean let's decorate one up because you know in the style of these mass making we normally like to you know to decorate one and sort of see how it would look if we were actually using it so let's just yep cut this down like that okay now there are a set of um steampunk fussy cuts that go with the steampunk um you know uh collection i don't think i've actually printed those off would you believe so we're just going to have to again not use those oh no just like sort of torn that even more right well we have not made a good job of this so yeah there are some steampunk um fussy cuts i haven't bought them along i had meant to print them and well i think i did print them but i've unfortunately put them somewhere else now but i have got this which is um in thick you know thick paper so let's just take a couple of kind of pieces from here so might take this butterfly and now do I want to take this man so let's take this clock now as you can see I've cut into this where I obviously cut that pocket but what I'm going to do is just cut it around here and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to cover up where we've torn that page okay so I'm hoping we can put this here and that's just going to cover up where I've obviously torn into, you know, and damaged that paper. So that's, yeah, that's what I'm going to do there. So I'm going to glue this down and then I will trim it up in a minute. So let's just glue this down here. Okay. Now have to be a bit careful because it's obviously got that man on there don't want to cut through his face or anything like that so let's just pop that down like that mop that out from the back okay right so then we're just going to trim this down here yeah, I had such a lot of fun making this steampunk um, papers and things because, to be honest, steampunk is not really, um, you know, a style which I particularly am drawn to. So, you know, for me, it was quite a challenge to, you know, to work with something like steampunk. You know, that was quite sort of out of my my normal comfort zone. So, 
but I did have a lot of fun and I've of course tried to sort of girly them up and um, you know colour colour the steampunk up so you know while steampunk isn't necessarily a not not as a genre but you know isn't a subject or a you know theme that I'm particularly drawn to hopefully you know what I did with it has kind of made it more um yeah perhaps more vibrant and just different looking to how perhaps you know I've seen it look before um you know and that's not saying that there's anything wrong with how it's looked before obviously there's not but you know just for me it was just not sort of a theme that yeah just wasn't really in my my usual kind of style Right, so I've got this butterfly. Now, I don't know really whether I want to have that on there or not, if I'm truthful, because obviously that was also hanging off the edge of the page. So now, of course, it looks like, you know, a bit peculiar shaped. But let's just ink it up and see, because I will probably put some lace on here and then it will perhaps then, you know, change that whole look anyway. So let's ink around there. Now, obviously, bearing in mind that that coffee dye on this is still sort of soggy. So, yeah, it's it's still quite wet. So, it's picking up the ink a lot more than I would, would have liked. Obviously, I had not realised it was quite so wet either. But there we go, like that. Now, here, so if we would have the butterfly... Well, we could have the butterfly like that. And then all I'm thinking is, if we have some lace or something. Mm. The lace is going to cover that man up, which, wow, I haven't really kind of factored that in, had I? No, I haven't. All right. So unless we have the lace going down here. How about like that? Let's just check if I want any lace on there. I do really like it on here, I must say. I think that looks very, oops, very pretty. So, yeah, should we have the lace going down the edge? Right, so just going to glue this on. Would have generally used the fabric tack, but, you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, I just generally pull in whatever, whatever my hand lands on first. So, yeah, even though it's lace, I'm still just, you know, using my Anita's Tacky glue just because that was the one that my hand landed on. Right. And then I just take a little bit of lace. I'm just going to see whether I could have this just poking out from just under that butterfly just slightly like that. Just so we've got a touch of lace on there. Oops. So, yeah. Oh, dear. Okay. Like that. And then, right, let's just use the hot glue here only because it's going over the lace. And, of course, the, um, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? Base piece is still a bit soggy with the coffee dye. So, yeah. Okay loving how that looks and then what i'm thinking is perhaps have an eyelet in there so let's see oh my goodness how yummy does that color look and there. so these are the lovely wide eyelets that i was gifted by the lovely marianne i also was um gifted some more by the lovely michelle who runs our facebook group now oh, i can never remember do i use the thin yeah, the big um, hole. Right. Let's just do that. Okay, and put that through there. Oh, come on. Mm. Come on. No. Get rid of that. Come on. OK, 
Okay, right. So I just need to squeeze this. Okay. Well, I didn't have high hopes of making a very neat job of that because, of course, it was, you know, through that lace and things. So, yeah, it wasn't wasn't really likely to go well, was it? But anyway, I don't mind. And, oh, do you know what? I've just got, got this tassel here. I mean, that, yeah, it's not really the right colour because it's black. It would have obviously been better if it were, you know, green or blue. I don't think I've got any with getting some more no so i'm going to have to use this right now i wasn't planning on doing this i was planning on using a um you know some baker's twine but i suddenly thought oh this is going to look very elegant i think so just pop that tassel on like that okay Oh my goodness, how lovely does that look? Yeah, I just love how that looks. So, you know, that's kind of how that would be. Now, obviously you could then put like, say a Velcro dot or something. Should we do that, in fact? Let's use a Velcro dot. So I find these best to just actually place them together. Oops. Well, she says, and now it's, no, it's not working. Oh, now I've stuck them all together. Right. Oh my goodness, another case of how not to craft. Right, place them together and then you can obviously glue that on like that. So I'm just going to, yeah, hot glue that down on this side just so it's got some extra, extra glue. Okay, and then just, oops pop that down like that now we didn't put any extra pages in or anything like that but of course you could put some extra pages in here just to kind of like finish it off but you've got your pocket here at the top which hopefully I've repaired now oops now I can't get into it at all would you believe oh my goodness right yeah okay so you've got your pocket here at the top which is of course, you know, a window pocket. So you could pop something in there. Let me just see whether I've got some of my, you know, vintage document that I didn't end up using. Let's just take a piece of that because some of that's quite narrow. Okay. Oops. So I could pop that into the pocket. All oh, right. It's quite narrow to be honest. It's bit of a squeeze but yeah it's not brilliant because this is flimsy paper so it would obviously work better if this was you know thicker but yeah if if you had something thicker that would go into that pocket there and then of course you've got journaling space on this side and then you could put something down on here you know for more journaling space on this side and it gives you this gorgeous little booklet so, and then, you know, we just happen to have Velcroed this, but of course you could finish yours however you liked. Um, and then you could obviously glue it on three sides and use it as a side loading pocket as well. So yeah, I really hope that you like it. Um, like I say, completely not my idea. It's from Natasha at Treasure Books, um, but they are very, very yummy, aren't they? So I do apologize for the long-winded, protracted demonstration, you know. Um, but like I said, I was just trying to obviously show you how you would extend the side if your envelope was a little bit small. And to be honest, you know, although it took a long time, I absolutely love the, you know, the finished result. It just looks absolutely gorgeous, doesn't it? So, yeah, I really hope that you like them. And um, yeah, have fun if you decide to make some. And I will see you guys next week. Now, next week we are making jabos. So you will need some ribbons. Um... I think it's next week. Yeah, pretty sure it's next week. So you will need some ribbons on hand for our mass making session. So um, yeah, have a great week, everybody. And I will see you next week for our mass making sessions then. But I will see you guys on Friday um, for our video on Friday. So thank you so much and have a great week. Bye.